Hello there and welcome, I'm Bob Proctor. I want to talk to you about forming a habit that'll literally change your world. I formed this habit a long time ago, and I'm going to tell you my world changed like night and day. Work for me, it'll work for you. But before we get into it, I want you to come back in history with me to September the 12th, 1962. For the eyes of the world, now look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond. Our leadership in science and industry, our hopes for peace and security, our obligations to ourselves as well as others, all require us to make this effort to solve these mysteries, to solve them for the good of all men. There is no strife, no prejudice, no national conflict in outer space as yet. Its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Do you know what John Kennedy did there? Made a decision. That was a decision. It was a big decision, and it changed everything forever. Well, do you know, decision is something most people never really learn, and for good reason. Stay with me, because I'm gonna show you something here that you possibly have never looked at before. This book changed everything for me. In this book, it's Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. There's 15 chapters. There's one chapter, the entire chapter, is dedicated to decision. Now you may say, well, I make decisions. Do you really? You may make little ones, but you make the real important ones. Do you go after what you want in life? Do you get everything you want in life? See, the truth is only about 3% of the people are really living the way they want to live, driving the car they want to drive, taking the trips they want to take, living in the houses they want to live in. Most people do not, and they'll tell you why they can't, and they'll give you a string of reasons a mile long. All seem very practical, very reasonable, and the leader of them all is they can't afford it. Well, the truth is, we live in the richest country in the history of the world. Money is the easiest thing in the world to earn once you learn how. Well, if you turn making a decision into a habit, you're going to learn how to do a whole lot of things you may think you can't do. See, what we're doing is we're exploring a side of our personality that we really don't understand. Now, I photographed a page out of here. Napoleon Hill said, those who reach decisions promptly and definitely know what they want and they generally get it. The leaders in every walk of life decide quickly and firmly. That's the major reason why they're leaders. He said, the world is a habit of making room for the man or woman whose words and actions show they know where they're going. And he went on to explain why we have difficulty here for very good reason. Indecision is a habit, which usually begins in youth the habit takes on permanency as the youth goes through grade school, high school, and eventually through college without any definite purpose. The major weakness of all educational systems is they neither teach nor encourage the habit of definite decision. Now, why is that? Well, the truth is, most people really don't know. We're dealing with a side of our personality that most people do not understand. What you see here is not me, this is my body. You never hear anyone say, am hand. You see, we've got to take a look at the non-physical side of ourselves. Lincoln, President Lincoln put that very well. He said, to believe in the things you can see and touch is no belief at all. But to believe in the unseen is a triumph and a blessing. Well, let's look at this. Making a decision, we're going into the unseen part of ourselves, Using faculties most people don't even know they've got. You see, Einstein said the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. Well, he said the rational mind is a faithful servant. He said, we have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. 
What is a servant? Well, there it is there. It's our sensory factors. We can see, hear, smell, taste, touch. What are they for? They are to help us correspond and communicate with our outside world. But you know that the physical world is nothing but the manifestation of the non-physical world. That's right. Here we've got something that's nothing short of a miracle when we look at it properly. This is a little cell phone. It has more power than the computer head that took the first rocket to the moon. Think of that. And I'm carrying it around in my pocket. I can touch a button and bang like that, send a picture to you, and you'll get it simultaneous with me sending it. How does all that happen? Well, it happens because we're dealing with the non-physical side of ourselves. We're dealing with just pure power. How do we get at that? Well, we've been gifted. We've been gifted with something no other form of animal life has. We have these higher faculties. You've got perception, memory, imagination, will, reason, intuition. I want you to shift your perception for a moment of yourself. You know, our good friend, the late Wayne Dyer, he put it very well. He said, when you change the way you look at something, what you look at will change. Change your perception. Do you know the reason most people don't make decisions? Because they can't see how they're going to get there. So what do they do? They keep doing things that they can see how they're going to get there. And that's why their life never really changes. Stick with me here for a moment. Think of you. You are a mass of energy and you function on frequencies. That's what you are. Take a look at yourself. Here's a shot taken by Curley in Photography. Simeon Curlian was a Russian who perfected a form of photography way back in the early 30s that'll photograph mass where you can photograph the energy leaving the body. There's a glow of energy around you. This physical thing we live in is a mass of energy. Well, we're going to be talking about the non-physical side. You see, a frequency is a level of vibration. Do you know vibration is a natural law of the universe? Everything vibrates, nothing rests. We live in an ocean of motion. Now, there's an infinite number of frequencies. Now get this, let all these lines represent levels of vibration, okay? Levels of vibration, as we said, are referred to as frequencies. You and I think on frequencies, the highest function we're capable of. Now here's where you really want to pay attention. This, if you get this, if I communicate this effectively, your life can change, because it sure changed mine. We think on a frequency. And the frequency we think on dictates the results we get. So we're sitting here and they say, these are my results, but this is where I really want to go. And we point to a star. Somebody said, what do you really want? I really want to be wealthy. Do you know that most people never live the way they really want to live? They don't. They never do the amount of money they can. They don't live in the house they really want to live in. They don't take the vacations they really want to take. Why? because they don't know how. You see, when they set those targets, they look off into a space and they see nothing. Now look here for a moment. These lines represent levels of frequency, or you could say levels of awareness. But when we set the target way up there, it's all gone. We don't know how to get there. Think of that. Think of what Steve Jobs says. You cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots are going to connect as you go ahead. Now that's pretty big. If you're going to look at the unseen, you have to use the higher faculties. That's what Einstein talked about, the sacred gift. We can use faculties to look into the future. We can go into the future with our imagination and see ourselves where we want to be a year from now, and then bring that into the present and begin acting like the person we want to become. So let's go back and look at this again. We'll say, that's where I want to go, and I'm going to get there. Now, we do make decisions, but then we say, mm, not going to start yet. I'm going to do that as soon as I get the money. I talked to a young couple. In fact, I wrote about them in a book, Pat and John. I sat with them in a hotel in Toronto, and they said they wanted to buy a house, and I said, well, go on out and buy one. We said, can, we can't buy a house. We haven't got any money. I said, you don't need any money. And they looked at me rather strange. I said, what do you need the money for? You haven't made the decision to buy the house. You see, 
You don't need the money until after you make the decision. Person say, I want to take a trip and I'm going to go as soon as I get the money. You don't need the money to make the decision to take the trip. I'm going to start my own business as soon as everything's right. Things are never going to be right. You've got to make a decision. Now, you see, when you make the decision, everything starts to change. Look at this for a moment. You're thinking down here on this frequency, and that's what's giving you the results you're getting. If you want to go where you say you want to go, you've got to get on that frequency. You see, the truth is you're not thinking about getting there. You're letting the present results repeat, and that's the star you're shooting at. You're going to get the same results over and over and over again as long as you keep your thinking there. You've got to get your thinking up on this higher frequency. Because when you get on that frequency, the thoughts and things that are going to come into your mind will take you there. How do you think we got to the moon? Kennedy didn't know how to get to the moon. When he asked Dr. Werner von Braun, who's considered the father of the space program, what will it take for us to build a rocket to carry a man to the moon he, and bring him back safely to Earth? He said, the will to do it. The will is one of your higher faculties. That's what Einstein was talking about. The will gives you the ability to focus on one thing to the exclusion of everything else. When you focus on that one thing, you're on that higher frequency. How do you do that? Well, first, you got to make a decision to go there. You see, your mind and thoughts must be focused on the same frequency as your goal. How do we do that? We make a committed decision. That's where I'm going. And when you make the committed decision, that's irrevocable. You cannot go back. You shut the past off. You begin thinking on this higher frequency. And you think and act like the person you want to become. Does it sound preposterous? That's what the Wright brothers did. And they introduced us to a new kingdom. That's what Sir Edmund Hillary did. I had the good fortune of working with him. He was a beekeeper from Auckland, New Zealand. He was the first person to ever climb Mount Everest. He didn't know how to get to the top of that mountain until after he got there. He trusted in the image that he held in his mind. You got to trust in the image you hold in your mind. You got to think like the person you want to become. It takes a decision to get up on that higher frequency. And the second you make the decision, everything starts to happen. Now you got to believe you can do it. The moment your belief matches with any state, the higher frequency is the state. The moment your belief matches with any frequency, you fuse with it. And this union results in the activation, the projection of the plots and plans and conditions and circumstances. Things start to happen. Think about it. You're going to a dance. You need the new dress. You make a decision. You get. You don't know where the money's coming from, but you've got to have the dress. You get the dress. You want that car. You make it as you get the money. You get the car. The moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. And this union results in everything that happens. Now look at this new state of conscious awareness becomes your home from which you view the world. You're operating on a different frequency. Don't expect a lot of support from the people around you. They don't know what you're doing. They probably think you've gone a little crazy. But listen, in your workshop, and if you're observant, you're going to see your outer reality shaping itself upon the model of your imagination. Do you want to know the beautiful truth? This works like unadulterated magic. It does. This is what all our Proctor Gallagher Institute programs deal with. I want you to control the flow. There's thought energy flowing to and through you. It's flowing freely to and through you. Make certain it proves everything that it connects with. You've got all of this power locked up within you. Utilize it. Go after what you want. Quit going after things you already know how to get. There's no, there's no real gain in that. Don't compromise. Go after what you want. It's not that easy, but I'm going to tell you something. It sure is worthwhile. Turn decision-making into a habit. And when you do that, everything changes. 
See, I didn't go back to school. No formal education. I didn't gain any business experience. I made a decision and bang, away I went. And everything started to fall into place. I opened offices in different countries, in different cities. There were no kinds of money. I had money coming to me while I was sleeping. And so can you. In fact, you turn this into a decision, you can earn more money when you're sleeping than you'll spend when you're awake. Decision, it'll change your world. Check us out at ProctorGallagherInstitute.com for tips, tools, and resources.